Our restaurants are packed. Our streets are full. The energy is great. Downtown Denver is seeing a boost in business thanks to the Avs. The city hopes celebrating the Stanley Cup will bring people downtown even after the party is over. Stanley Cup has completely changed how downtown Denver feels. Folks, though, are hitting the roads in record numbers. High gas prices aren't stopping Coloradans from traveling for the 4th of July holiday. There is so much pent up travel demand because of the pandemic. And explosive testimony about what former President Trump did to the Secret Service during the Capitol attack. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. Now the Secret Service is ready to respond to those allegations. New details within the last hour. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer announced he will officially retire at noon Eastern tomorrow. Breyer told President Biden of his retirement plan this morning. He told Biden earlier this year that he would step down after the current term. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson will take Breyer's place. Colorado primary results are in and we now know who Coloradans will be voting for in November. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. Here's a look at some of the big statewide races. In the race for U.S. Senate, Republican Joe O'Day will take on Democratic incumbent Michael Bennett for the U.S. Senate seat, one of the two here in Colorado. O'Day said he will be an independent voice in the Senate who will stand up to members of his own party. Republican Heidi Ganahl will take on Democratic incumbent Governor Jared Polis in November. Ganahl beat Greg, Greg Lopez. And Pam Anderson wins the Republican nomination for Secretary of State. The former Jefferson County clerk and past head of the State Clerks Association beat out Mike McDonnell and Mesa County clerk Tina Peters. She'll take on Democratic incumbent Jenna Griswold come November. And you can see results from other races in Colorado's primary right up right now on the DenverChannel.com. We will also have more on the primary a little bit later on today on Denver 7 News at 5. A big milestone happens in a few weeks along the Central 70 project. The new eastbound tunnel will soon open for traffic. Governor Jared Polis and Senator Michael Bennett were just some of the officials who got a tour of the project this morning. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon reports. The big name out here today was White House Senior Advisor and Infrastructure Coordinator Mitch Landreau. Now he's the person President Biden picked to actually implement this plan even before he had signed that infrastructure bill. And they got a tour of a lot of things in that tunnel that's about to open. Things from the jet fans to the fire deluge system, a bunch of technology that we're going to get to see pretty soon here. The infrastructure law is expected to give Colorado billions of dollars for a number of projects. One of the next mega projects for the state is at the base of Floyd Hill along I-70. Lots of us drive that ski choke point. It's caused by a bottleneck and sharp curves on aging bridges. Our partners at the Denver Post say it'll have a $700 million rebuilding and partial widening project. CDOT says that should take around five years to complete, with most of the construction starting next year. In February, CDOT said they would be looking for competitive federal grants, some likely because of the infrastructure bill. This infrastructure bill, which was bipartisan, as the governor said, the evidence that we can work together if we, if we want, is the biggest investment in infrastructure since Eisenhower was our president since a lot of these roads and bridges were built the first time. You know, infrastructure is a key component of livability, of strong communities, of sustainability, uh, of a strong private sector and economic growth and jobs. Uh, and I'm proud uh, that the work on this project and so much work being done across the state, including paving 600 miles of rural roads, Back here at the Central I-70 project, those with CDOT say this 10-mile stretch of I-70, it's one of Colorado's economic backbones. They say that because hundreds of thousands of people use this bit of the highway to get to and from DIA every day. In Denver, Colette Bordel on Denver 7. And you can expect a whole lot of traffic on I-70 and throughout Colorado for the 4th of July holiday weekend. AAA says this will be the second busiest travel period for the holiday since 2000. Close to 800,000 Coloradans will travel 50 miles or more over that holiday. Most of them will be driving. And people are driving despite high gas prices. Colorado's prices right now, $4.90 a gallon, which is up more than $1.50 from this time last year. Nationally, gas prices around $4.86 a gallon, which is down from $5 just a few weeks ago. Folks, though, are hitting the roads in record numbers. Uh, they do see their cars as a cost control mechanism. And by that, I mean they can decide where they go. They can decide where they pull in to stop. Uh, they can decide which restaurants they're going to go to. 
Now the busiest times on the roads will be tomorrow and Friday afternoon. It's because you have people who are leaving work and people leaving town early. The best days to drive will be Sunday and Monday. Record high inflation is the biggest concern for Colorado's business leaders, and they're feeling less optimistic about the economy. CU released its Leeds Business Confidence Index this morning. More than 70% of businesses say they're seeing moderate to significant impacts because of inflation. Nearly a quarter of those surveyed think the country is already in a recession, and close to 60% think a recession will happen within the next year. File your taxes so you can get your Colorado cash back rebate. The rebates are Tabor refund checks. Single filers are getting $750. Joint filers are getting $1,500. Checks will be mailed in August. People who don't file by tomorrow or wait until October's extension deadline likely won't get refunds until January. The U.S. military is adding more of a military presence in Europe. The U.S. will establish a permanent headquarters in Poland and is sending military equipment to the U.K., Germany, Italy, and Spain. More troops will also deploy to the Baltics. President Joe Biden made the announcement during a NATO summit in Madrid. He says it's to bolster regional security after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Together, our allies, we're going to make up sure that NATO is ready to meet the threats in all directions across every domain, land, air, and the sea. Currently, 100,000 U.S. troops in Europe, including 10,000 in Poland. The White House hasn't given specifics about how large the permanent U.S. military presence will be in Poland or how many U.S. troops will deploy to the Baltics. We're hearing stunning testimony from a top aide to former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows about what happened the day of the Capitol attack. Cassidy Hutchinson testified under oath saying she was told that former President Donald Trump lunged at a Secret Service agent when he wasn't allowed to go to the Capitol on January 6th. Now the Secret Service is ready to respond in some way to those claims. And Wynn reports from Washington. Explosive testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson, a top aide to former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. It was unpatriotic. It was un-American. We were watching the Capitol building get defaced over a lie. She testified that not only did former President Trump know his supporters on January 6 had weapons, but that he wanted any armed protesters to march freely to the Capitol without going through metal detectors. I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Cassidy claims she was told by a deputy chief of staff that Trump insisted on driving to the Capitol after the rally and became furious when the agent behind the wheel refused to do so. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. The Secret Service now says they're prepared to give sworn testimony to respond to the allegations. One source confirming to ABC News that Trump was unhappy when agents wouldn't take him to the Capitol, but said agents would push back against any allegation that Trump assaulted anyone. Former President Trump disputed Hutchinson's testimony, calling it fake and saying he didn't know her. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, Golden is taking steps to try to prevent devastating wildfires. The city recently updated its protection plan, focusing on three things, mitigation, notification, and evacuation. The city wants everyone to sign up for the Lookout Alert Emergency Notification System, and officials want a plan allowing for smoother evacuations in neighborhoods. The city wants work on mitigation done through things like landscape design and maintenance on people's property. The plan is is really directed at what uh, landowners and, and private property owners can do on their properties to eliminate ladder fuels, eliminate sources of ignition near the home, to make sure that they aren't providing an environment, whether they live in an ember zone, which is the entire urban core of Golden, or they live adjacent to an open space. The city will present the plan at a community meeting tonight. It's at six inside of council chambers.
Well, fire mitigation work starts today near Beaver Creek in Eagle County. The goal there is to improve defensible space and create evacuation routes. The work won't wrap up until much later this year. Well, Denver is ready to celebrate the Av Stanley Cup. The city was busy changing street signs on Bannock Street in front of the, of the city and county building in honor of the Avs. The city also painted burgundy and blue stripes along the parade route on Broadway. Now, bars and restaurants in downtown Denver, well, they're expecting a big boost in business during tomorrow's Avs Parade. The Downtown Denver Partnerships says close to 280,000 people were downtown last Friday for Game 5. You get to remind people about downtown, all the businesses that there are, all the new restaurants, all the new development. There's a ton. We have seen a billion dollars of development in downtown since the pandemic. The Downtown Denver Partnership hopes the parades will, or the parade rather, will remind fans about what they love about coming downtown. And you can watch the parade at home if you choose. Denver 7 is teaming up with Altitude Sports to give you unrivaled access to the parade. Tune in to Denver 7 starting at 4.30 tomorrow morning for pre-parade coverage. The parade itself starts at 10. And then new at 11, the Nuggets are making some moves in the offseason. ESPN is reporting the team is finalizing a deal that will send Will Barton and Monte Morris to the Wizards. The Nuggets would get Kentavious Caldwell Pope and Ish Smith in return. Private parking lots are causing problems in downtown Denver. Still ahead, now there's something watching your car, and it could cost you a lot of money if you get caught. Plus, it's time to celebrate art. We have the details about a festival returning to Cherry Creek this weekend.